If you're thinking altcoins, this is going to be a big video for you guys. You do not want to miss it. We are going to reveal some pretty crazy stuff that will affect your holdings. So make sure and stay tuned. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Path. Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor, and that is iTrust Capital. If you're looking at a long-term holding, jump over to their website, itrustcapital.com, and you can get into your own crypto IRA. And guess what you can put in it? You can put a Bitcoin, Ethereum. You can even do gold and silver into that. Not that I would, but that's one other option that you have along with a ton of altcoins, all of that available to your own self-directed crypto IRA. Check it out. You'll get a $100 funding reward if you decide to use our link. All right, so let's get into our first uh, clip here. I just want to showcase something that I think is, is a, it, well, first of all, it's a big factor here. Uh, Apple was hit with a landmark $2 billion EU antitrust fine. Now, this is the biggest one ever uh, accumulated. And look at that number. I mean, this is now starting to get into real issues. If they do not comply and continue to basically kind of run roughshod over the EU, I think we're going to start to see some very big issues at hand for Apple. Now, there's a lot of people that have looked at Apple stock over the last little bit. Here's the one year, slightly moving, if not anything, sideways. But I think the factor here is here recently is a little bit more of a dip. And do we see Apple finally go under the $2 trillion mark? I think that's the question that everybody's looking at. What are some other factors that are gonna hurt Apple? We're gonna paint that out for you and how Solana may be the altcoin that is gonna be driving most of this interest. I wanna go to this first clip right here. This is CNBC talking about Apple, listen in. Apple's response here, they said they are going to appeal the decision and they lay out there's a big blog post going up any minute now from Apple kind of ripping apart this decision, basically saying things like uh, Spotify has taken advantage of the Apple ecosystem. Um, I talked to one of Spotify's lawyers about this um, last week, guys, and their kind of their position on this is, well, you know, we want to pay less fees. Of course, they want to make more money. But what they also say is, you know, Apple's ecosystem wouldn't be as successful without uh, these third-party apps. Who wants to buy a phone that you can't, you know, download a third-party app on? So their position is, well, we're adding value to this Apple ecosystem to us and a lot of other developers. Clearly, the EU agrees more uh, with Spotify. This, this is a much bigger fine. Than was uh, it was reported 500 million euros. That's what I was and say. so this is more than double what people were expecting. It's more than triple. Uh, the fine to be, yeah, more than triple what yeah. people were expecting. It's only going to be in Europe. So you're going to have a different iPhone experience as a European customer than people in the rest of the world. But a lot of people see those changes as emblematic of what they might have to do in the U.S. We're expecting any day now the DOJ to file their antitrust lawsuit against Apple, which uh, covers a lot of these same issues. So this could be a template for what we see around the world. Maybe worth taking a look at Apple shares right now, too. Yeah. They're down, but just slightly a decline of about seven or three quarters of a percent. Yeah. There, and there will be an appeal. We need Apple for the market. Yes. And it hasn't, it's yeah, NVIDIA, been yeah, NVIDIA, it's fine. Has, it, has the baton, baton been passed? The fine. goggles aren't going to do it. Did you buy one? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> All right. So a lot of problems with Apple. I don't know if you guys saw some of the circulation around the goggles and goggle gate, I guess, with the crack that's now starting. Anyway, the point is, is that Apple has got problems on all fronts. Okay. And let's just be clear. Spotify is no, you know, friend of the creator space either. They are still one of the biggest problems out there in terms of independent creators. That's really the biggest challenge that I think crypto does address and could really kind of rectify across the entire market. I want to go to a clip here on artist revenue on Spotify. Listen in. You and me are meant to be the moonshot I thought I'd let you into my Spotify insights for this year. My music has been streamed 650,000 times. I had 207,000 total listeners for this year. My music was added to 6,490 playlists. Almost 98,000 people streamed my songs for the first time. You know how much money I've made? Zero dollars. Nice. I, I don't think it's anything to smile about. This is a bad thing, but that is a, the reality of what is happening out there. This is a problem. Of course, there is Violetta, and she's starting to do some other things. She's going to start going into her own marketplace and doing her own NFTs. So right there, you can kind of see a little bit more about what she's been doing. Point is, is that artists are starting to utilize the infrastructure that crypto is about 
to essentially make their way. And this, I think, starts to opt out of the ecosystem, such as Apple, such as Spotify. We talk about it a lot on this show. I think content is the next one that starts to fall. Now, the problem is, is that you still have major independent content creators, much like Joe Rogan, who are out there getting a new deal. This, of course, is Joe Rogan getting a new Spotify deal. This doesn't really help many of the independent creators. Kudos to Joe. More than worth it because, really, this is about a stock price. By signing Joe, and notice here, this hit show is going to be distributed now broadly, including YouTube, not just on Spotify, but YouTube, rather than exclusively on the audio streaming side of things. So that, I think, was Joe coming in and you know putting a little pressure on. But when you look at what Joe Rogan did for Spotify in terms of just their stock price, I think that's the play that everybody's making right now uh, going forward. So, And you can kind of see the Joe, the Joe, I'll call it the Joe Rogan pump right there. If you look right here, this is August of 23. And then you get this little bump right here in December. And it's just been going up, 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 up. Now, can it recover? I think that's the key here. If they continue to push out news like this with Joe Rogan, it's a big deal. But let's not forget, there are some other alternatives out there. Audius, which is a project also on Solana that we really like. One of the reasons that I think this will continue to be a big factor, Audius took a huge bump right there. Guess what? On the Apple News, this of course is where you see a little bit of the movement on the token price. And I think we're going to continue to see a little bit more action, even though it has been going up over the last month. Lots of movement right here on Audius uh, as a whole. So this is another project that lives on Solana. But there are many out there that I think are going to affect the ecosystem for Apple. One of the things I want to get into is Uber, because that in itself is a big ecosystem contributor. Listen in. February the 14th concluded successfully, right, the No Love protest. The second one, you're hearing it now in this channel, not only again Canada, UK and the United States will unite, but now Africa will join in. The South Americas will join in and a lot of the other European countries, all happening behind the scenes because we ain't fools on April Fool's Day. The third protest, which is Labor Day, is going to involve many countries. And then the fourth one is going to be on July the 4th, on Independence Day, right? We're going to show them that we are independent contractors. And by the fourth time, we're going to have every country that these gig workers operate in on board. And they're going to pay dearly. They're going to pay dearly in social media, on TV stations, in newspapers like they did. It was insane. So all I can say is Dara Koshashawi, buckle up. All right, so this is one we've covered a lot around Uber and their gigging of the gig workers. And, and it's an issue because I think this, again, continues to push toward, is there an alternative out there? There is one alternative that came out of Breakpoint a couple of years ago, and it was a project called Teleport. Now, this is a clip that explains a little bit more about what they're trying to do. Listen in. How much of a $30 Uber trip do you think goes to your driver? So they pay their own social security, benefits, gas, and a car lease. What's left is more like $4. While Uber is trying to give company equity to drivers, they can't. This law only allows company to share equity with employees. The problem is Uber drivers are independent contractors, which means they cannot give their shares to them. So basically, drivers cannot get the benefits, cannot get equity, and they earn less. Now I want to show you a ride-sharing app that's fixing this. It's called Teleport. On the surface, it looks very similar. You open the app, enter your destination, get a car, and go. But there's two big differences. One, it's cheaper for the users. And two, the driver earns more. From $30, the driver gets paid $25, which is 85% of the total fare. Why can Teleport pay more than Uber? First, Uber's biggest expense is 24% on ads and trying to get new drivers. Teleport spends nothing. Instead, Teleport incentivizes drivers and users through Web3 reward referrals built on a Solana blockchain. And second, Uber spends 10% of the total fare on fixed costs because it has a closed system protocol. Instead, Teleport replaces a traditional ride-sharing company like this with an open protocol, therefore having little to no fixed costs. Now, this is something that I've talked about a lot is that when you look at innovation and how it's going to happen in this next layer of whether it's blockchain and AI, many people would say, well, you know, the incumbents, meaning Uber, the likes of what we'll see with Lyft, et cetera, 
will be the winners. I think it's the all the opposite. I think it's going to be the startups, the startups that are grinding and the ones that are out there getting going. Teleport being one of them. It's a project, again, that's, that rides on Solana. And, of course, they launched their uh, first city in Texas. And, you know, like it or not, I wish they'd have done it here in Miami. I think they would have had, you know, a, a bigger opportunity, especially with their tie-in with Helium Mobile or the potential for a tie-in with Helium Mobile. But let's remember, all of these startups, including Coinbase, Amazon, many of them started in little offices just like that, including Travis Kalanick, who was the founder of Uber, who in a, the original Uber, I think was the real valiant effort of re trying to replace what was happening with the, you know, pretty much the situation that the taxi drivers had in terms of a stranglehold in a lot of many of the cities. So it, it all starts in that kind of mission. I hope that that stays the case here with of what is happening in uh, blockchain. Don't forget, all of this is going to pin around one thing, and that is the next generation of a phone. Now, what is going to be the next generation of a phone? Well, you got the Saga right here. Let's not forget, if you've not ordered the Saga, just remember, you heard it here first. We talked about it back in the founder window. You could have saved some money. Now you can still get into this early adopter window, but it is closing fast, so jump in on that and grab it while you can. The reason is... There has been drop after drop after drop. This is value that's coming to Saga holders without you doing anything except holding the phone, including a lot of the NFTs that the Solana Foundation is, uh, or Solana Mobile is themselves also airdropping in. So a lot of huge value coming in. Cat with Hat, of course, is another one that just added to it. We showed you guys this last week uh, out of the bag. And guess what? There's another one coming that we're privy to that's going to be, again, coming in on the Saga uh, holders out there. So if you're not aware of it, there's going to be a lot of different dApps coming out. I think we're going to start to see real movement in this space. And all of this is riding on Solana. So if, if Apple has a, a nemesis, it might be uh, Solana in a way. You got a Hive Mapper. Don't forget about them. This is the mapping solution on Solana where you can go out and earn by just mapping locations. Think Google Maps, Google Earth, etc. You've got, of course, this happening, which is Solana Renaissance. This is a, ha a hackathon. Think of this like the new Shark Tank. Getting ready to happen right here on March 8th, or excuse me, March 4th through, through April 8th. Some of the things to watch for is this right here. Look what they're looking for. D-Pins, DeFi payments, DAOs, gaming, infrastructure, consumer apps, all that. And here's the prizes. This is going to draw in a lot of developers, and it's going to continue to to really drive. Notice that that is uh, presented by IONET. We just did their big, uh, by the way, if you guys didn't catch that uh, interview we did with the IONET CEO, go back and look at it. It was over the weekend, so go check it out. All right, last up here is, of course, who drives all of this stuff? What's well, usually lobbyists, and lobbyists are connected to what? They're connected to lawmakers who then create the laws that usually benefit well, guess who is one of the biggest contributors to this lady right here? Senator Warren. Let's take a look at the list here on Opal C Open Secrets. Google, number one, and then there, number seven, Apple Inc. Boom. So these are the kind of things that we are going to have to deal with here in the United States. So one of the ways we can deal with that is put some of our own people in there to where they can bring a little bit more awareness around what's happening in crypto. And that, of course, would be none other than Mr. John Deaton. Let me play a clip for you. Now, my opponent has a bill that bans Bitcoin self-custody and crypto in the United States of America, okay? With the debt crisis where half Americans don't have $500 set aside in case of an emergency, with the opioid crisis, with income inequality, why? Why is Elizabeth Warren running on an anti-crypto platform? 12 years ago, she said, that she was going to Washington, D.C. to hold the bankers accountable. She was outraged that no banker went to prison from the 2008 financial crisis. Well, fast forward a decade, who just wrote her bill? Jamie Dimon and the Banking Institute wrote her anti-crypto bill. You go to fight the bankers, you can't beat them, so you join them and you become their number one lobbyist. Because since I announced, she has emailed five times. She's got senators from Connecticut saying, this guy John Deaton is a problem. She won't outwork me, I promise you that. She'll outraise me, 
But if I'm competitive, I'm going to win this race. All right, so kudos to John. I think you know he's been on our show a couple of times. And I would say this, if, uh, if you guys want to make a change out there, go check out John Deaton for Senate. Uh, it's worth it. I'll try to leave a link in below. And when I retweet this video later, I'll definitely give John a call out. Because uh, I think he's the one. Now, you think about Elizabeth Warren. Well, he's right. She has kind of positioned herself now differently with the big banks. Makes sense now that she's after crypto. And she's also positioned herself with big tech. Because again, these are scenarios that play out usually in these super PACs, which is the funding of what all these lobbyists generate through to get to these lawmakers to get laws made that are beneficial to all their companies. Now, the key here is all this can be a grassroots effort. That's how all of these different companies have grown. Uber grew off through grassroots. Apple itself grew through grassroots. Podcasting grew through gra grassroots. We will see a grassroots effort, I think, in Web3. So stick around if you guys want to catch more of that. Make sure and subscribe right now. It's one of the best ways to get additional content from our show over on our Diamond Circle. And if you're not following me on X, it's at Paul Barron. Catch you next time right here on TechBath.